Hi friends, today I'm going to cover the various database options available on the cloud and at the same time, what are the administration tasks for the database. Before diving into the topic, I'm just going to show you the few topics you can cover after this particular video. In case if you want to know in detail about what are the DB options available, here is a video where you can see what are the different options available and then how to create a SQL DB and how to connect to that. So these are the different options on the Azure and coming to the AWS, I have covered RDS here. You can see RDS relational database and uh, database creation, also the failovers and stuff I have created here. Uh, just jumping back to our topic. So what are the use cases of the database? Everyone knows nowadays, but what is what is the use case to move to the cloud? First one is like uh, you have uh, plenty of applications uh, for your maybe the e-commerce, financial or healthcare type of applications. All those different types of databases, maybe you are using some kind of relational database or no relational database, uh, different types of databases available, document DB, all those stuff. So all those things can be moved to the cloud. So storing data for and from variety of the apps and you can use retail, financial services, healthcare and whatnot. Like every type of uh, database you can move to the cloud. Apart from that, like uh, you may already have the setup in, in your on-premises, but if you want to move to the cloud, there must be some reason, right? So probably your on-premises data center is not good enough to support your big data or big data analytics or data warehouse or you want to uh, in, instead of reinvesting more onto your on-premises data center for all these big databases you want to move to the cloud then the next case study is like failovers backups and archival now you already have set up but you want to create a failover failover to some other reason what if some disaster happens in the particular region or some uh, unexpected power outage uh, occurs in that particular region then so you want to create a failover so for the failovers backups just to take the backup in the other region rather than in the same region you can also do that uh, again archival archiving your complete data so archive data definitely goes uh, heavy every day or every year probably you might be just uh, Pull, pu pushing your data to the archival storage rather than keeping it in the main storage. So all those type of things you can move to the cloud. Apart from that, high availability and disaster recovery is also another case study or use case uh, to move to the cloud for the databases. Now coming to the administrative task, like what are the major administrative tasks for database? So usually they can recommend to pick the right database or right options. There are plenty of options within the SQL Server. Again, you know, there are SQL VM, main instance, or you can also go with uh, SQ, uh, Azure SQL, pass based service. So then which option can be good? Cosmos DB, Do Document DB. So you can give within that databases, anyway, data development team will select what is the database they need, but you should su suggest or recommend which database uh, uh, option on the cloud like hosting option or deployment option is good for uh, for that particular requirement you don't choose what is a database that is not your job your development team will select what is a database but you are going to recommend them what is the deployment option the next one is failovers you need to create the failover what if the primary uh, database deployment is failed then you should have some failover mechanism to implement the failover mechanism you should help or you should completely implement that particular task. Next one is high availability and disaster recovery. So you should also have some kind of strategy or architecture for the high availability and disaster recovery. You should recommend to the team that how the high availability can be done, like by making use of availability zones, availability set, uh, load balancing, uh, or auto scaling, and also uh, what if the particular the primary region is going down then you should have some re, uh, cross region replicas maybe by using azure site recovery so there are different options available you have to select which way you are adapting for supporting high availability and disaster recovery and it, it completely depends on rto and rpo recovery time objective and the recovery point of objective so the next one is helping in migration in case 
if your team development team is planning to move from on premises to the cloud you should help uh, with the right approach to migrate the on premises db to the cloud again there are different ways based on the size of the database type of the database and uh, what is the approach you are taking on the cloud so based on that you should help uh, even in the migrating the database load balancing so for even load balancing probably based on the type of approach you have taken for example you if you are going with the infrastructure as a service then you should create multiple vms or multiple ec2 instances to host your database and you should have some kind of uh, syncing mechanism between those two servers and also you should uh, maintain that uh, load balancing in case if you are adapting the pass based services you don't need to worry about uh, maintaining the or managing the load because like azure sql or rds databases will uh, themselves take care all the load balancing and high availability disaster recovery and stuff coming to the security so you should also secure a database like by hosting your databases under the vnet like private uh, cloud or uh, even the vpc from the gcp or vpc from the aws you can you will be able to protect your database and you can also build the firewall and give only give the access only to the uh, required channels maybe from for to your web application or to the server which is required by keeping that under the vnet itself then optimization in sometimes there there may be some kind of performance issues on the uh, database so you should help them like how do you uh, improve the performance by optimizing or uh, the various things optimizing the data or database techniques that all will be taken care by the development team we are only talking about here optimizing your uh, database deployment probably enhancing more servers or enhancing more computing power to your systems or maybe by going through the query store you can check wh where the problem is coming maybe in the query so you can recommend to the uh, development team so that they can qu optimize your queries as well so next one is uh, backups and archivals uh, you even the, this is one of the main thing like you have to schedule the regular backups of your database this is very important thing when you are storing the databases right so you should know how to backup and how to schedule the backups so that all backups are taken on the regular intervals even the archival of the database so you should archive your database based on the uh, sls given or the uh, rules given by your development team monitoring so you should continuously monitor your databases if there is something going wrong or you should at least schedule or keep an alert whenever it is down you will notify you so that you can take necessary action not only that you should also continuously monitor how the billing is going and how the performance is going so that you can take necessary steps to improve uh, or to optimize your cloud deployment on the for the database next one is installing and configuring in case if you are adapting like ias based uh, services definitely you need to install and configure the various things so that all need to be taken care by the administrator upscale and downscale whenever the upscale is required you need to upscale it and downscale it is uh, also can need to be done by you based on your monitoring or observations testing and testing the failovers like when you create a failover or disaster recovery you should also test them regularly maybe like uh, once in a month or every week so that uh, you are making sure that your disaster recovery or failovers are working fine so these are the major tasks any administrator performs or you know i can say maximum task any administrator performs i already covered ec2 administrative task so these are the database administrative task these are actually cloud administrator of uh, database related administration tasks so moving to the next one here i am listing down the variety of database options on the cloud like azure sql main is instances sql vm so these are all sql related options within the sql server like you can adapt pass platform as a service or you can take the main instance or you can uh, create uh, sql vm which is pre installed uh, with the sql server so uh, this is completely ias that means you will need to manage all your disaster recovery failover security everything need to be taken care by you whereas the first two options will be done by the cloud provider 
So, uh, my uh, MariaDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL, if you, in case if you want those options, again, Azure provides uh, those as well as a managed uh, services, which is like pass based services, SQL Data Warehouse, Azure Cache for Redis, or Blob Storage Table, Azure Synapse Analytics, Data Lake Storage. These are the variety of options available. For example, if you take Cosmos DB, then again, it's a NoSQL database and uh, which is from the uh, Azure that is Microsoft. Data Lake Storage and Azure Synapse Analytics can be used as part of your big data. A SQL Data Warehouse is again, you know, as part of the big data analytics, you can use it, but you are actually pulling up all the variety of databases into the SQL Data Warehouse. You might be using 100 different databases for a variety of applications within your enterprise or organization. So all those databases data can be pulled into the SQL Data Warehouse. Uh, Azure Cache for Redis, again, in case if you want uh, the better performance and the load uh, the data into the cache, uh, then you can use Azure Cache for Redis. So, Blob Storage, it's general storage, but at the same time, they provide table storage as well under the Blob Storage. Similarly, you have options on the AWS and the GCP. Amazon Aurora is from uh, Amazon, their own relational database. RDS Oracle, RDS SQL, Server, RDS MariaDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL. These are all again comes under the uh, RDS as managed services, even Amazon RDS. Uh, coming to the Elastic Cache and Redis uh, Cache, in memory data uh, structures like uh, it maintains key value databases and uh, you can just load it faster. It, th these are mainly used for better performance. Uh, then coming to the Document DB and DynamoDB, they are the NoSQL databases. Uh, again, you have uh, one more managed Apache Cassandra, which is again a NoSQL database. Similarly, you have a few options on the GCP as well. Uh, you can see Cloud SQL, which is relational, Cloud Data Store, uh, Cloud Big Data Big Data Table is for the big data, uh, which is uh, similar to this uh, Dynamo or D Document DB. BigQuery is again, you know, kind of synapse analytics, uh, like Data Warehouse, Cloud Data Flow, Cloud Data Proc, Cloud Data Lab, Cloud Data Storage. These are the different. Uh, options available on the GCP. So if you want more information, just watch my future videos. But yeah, these are the options and if you want to create it from the scratch here, you can go to my other playlist and check it. Thanks for watching my videos.